What's up, guys? Bang, bang. It is lunch money time. While Wash is trying to get rich, the rest of us are trying to get our lunch money right. I'm here with the beautiful, intelligent Polina Ivailova, Marinova, Pompliano, P I M P. Don't forget that lunch money is now sponsored <laughs> by BlockFi. Go get a BlockFi account, blockfi.com slash pomp. Again, blockfi.com slash pomp. Go get a BlockFi account. Bang, bang. Cool. First up. The Trump administration proposed a $916 billion coronavirus relief package on Tuesday after congressional Democrats shot down a suggestion for a pared down plan from the Senate's leading Republican, Mitch McConnell. Wow, another trillion dollars in stimulus. How do we feel? Print it. It's not gonna get passed. Wait, why? I highly, highly doubt it's gonna get passed. Cause Democrats, they want a, uh, you know, 2.2 well, but, but trillion. The Trump administration proposed it. Yeah, the Republicans. Yeah. And the Democrats are going to say no, they want more. No, I think they're kind of satisfied. Uh, do they say so? Well, Pelosi and Schumer said in a statement it was progress that McConnell had signed off on a $916 billion offer, but bipartisan talks were the best hope for a solution. Yeah, and then they say that, hey, he cut the unemployment <laughs> insurance proposal at, uh, that's already being discussed, and that's unacceptable. So, I uh, mean, what's the difference between friends, between 916? No, a trillion here, a trillion there, who cares, right? Uh, look, this is absolute insanity. The first thing that should happen is you open up the economy. You'll immediately release a lot of pressure. The second thing that you should do is you should say, hey, if you're old, if you have pre-existing conditions, or you're scared to go outside, let us know. And then what you do is you figure out who needs help. But the reason why they're arguing over how much money to give people who don't have jobs is because they don't have jobs. And if you want to fix the unemployment problem, stop trying to give people money. Instead, what you should do is open up the economy well, is, so people can go back to work. It is kind of like a pressure cooker, like when you release some of the pressure, but you're right in that they could release pressure by letting people go back to their jobs. Although a lot of those jobs don't exist anymore. Uh, well, and guess what? more and more of those jobs are going away every day that they don't have the economy. 10,000 restaurant jobs will disappear in the next few weeks, according to it, the it, National Restaurant Association. It is insane. It is insane that during the summer, it was okay to have outdoor dining. There was no problem. There was no issue with COVID. And now all of a sudden, outdoor dining is being banned in places. This isn't about science. This isn't about a virus. This is all about idiots in power trying to exert their control. It is kind of interesting now that like politicians are celebrities in a way. Have you noticed that? They're, it's like they're ever they're on TV, they're on social media. We're talking about what so and so said. Like I don't give up. Anyway. Again, okay. again, literally. If you want to have a large gathering of people outside, if you say I'm going to serve them food, you're not allowed to do that. But if you say we're protesting, you can do that. And again, I love the fact that in America you can protest. Go outside and protest your ass off, right? Whatever your cause is, get loud, it's just, get outside. It's just not, but also open up the restaurants so people can sit outside and eat food. It's just not uniform, yeah. Of course, and in LA, LA is the, the funniest example of all of them. They literally tried to mandate, everything's gotta shut down, restaurants, all this stuff, except for you can't go outside and walk, but you can go play golf or pickleball. What is pickleball? What is the pickleball association doing lobbying <laughs> for approval we and a get, carve out for pickleball? We should get the pickleball people here in New York. Like I, I'm all about no, it's just, lobby the- Give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. That we literally have legislation being passed where it is banned to go outside for a walk. But you, if you play golf or pickleball, it's okay. Wake up. <laughs> all right. This ready? is absurd. Ready? Yes pissed off about this nonsense. Go ahead. Not really mad, but you know, <laughs> DoorDash, the food delivery provider, uh, sold shares in its IPO at $102 a piece, pricing way above its range. The offering on Tuesday values the company at $32.4 billion based on common stock outstanding and $38.7 billion on a fully diluted basis. This makes Tony, the CEO, a billionaire. On paper. I love it. Still on I paper. love it. Bang, bang. Good for him. Cool. But you yeah. know why? Because in America, we have capitalism. And in capitalist societies, when you build things of value that give people jobs, you get to make money. It's beautiful. 
Show me the incentives oh. and I'll show you the outcome. Guys, look at this awesome company. Watch the documentary, The Donut King, and you will see how uh, communist Cambodia, <laughs> what happened there, and, and how this man came to the United States as a refugee and became a multimillionaire. And he was so proud, and then he gambled it all, all away. But he was so good at building it, and he built it twice. He became rich in America twice. Lost Facts. it all, came back. Okay. Um, Uber. Let's do it. I don't know what they're doing. They're selling all of their moonshots. So uh, Uber sold its air taxi business, Elevate, uh, to Joby Innovation, shedding its last moonshot. You know, after it did the the the, ta the robo taxi or the whatever. So yeah, Uber's investing $75 million into Joby and expanding the, uh, what is it? The... Basically, they're selling their air taxi business. I ain't never seen an air taxi. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't know they had that. So they must have some technology or licenses or something that these other guys want because uh, I never seen an air taxi. I never been in one. Well, but here's the thing. It's basically doubling down on its existing business and, and Uber Eats and, and things like that. But like, what about the moonshots? Like, don't you need some long-term projects that you're... I don't think they're giving up on all their long-term projects, but the really, really crazy ones they are. Mm. Right? And like Aurora, you know? Ah. All right, next. Elon Musk makes two big moves. First, to Texas. He is now a proud Texan, y'all. Um, two, he... Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, Tesla has indicated that it will, it will sell up to five billion dollars in additional shares from time to time, and he—he's basically being Musk. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So what is Sorry. he doing? Well, he—I he, think the news is that he moved to Texas. Of course but he did. Also that, yeah. He moved to Texas. You know why he moved to Texas? Because he literally has California politicians talking shit to him on Twitter. I'd move too. Yesterday, I watched an interview he did with uh, the Wall Street Journal for their conference. I mean, he was coming after the haters. And he was basically like, you know what? America gave me an opportunity to... Basically, they asked him, do you think that... You, you're you a proud um, immigrant who says uh, America... This is the only country in the world where he has been... He would have been able to build the things that he has built, and he couldn't have done that in any other country. And they said, do you think that still holds true for in 2020? And he said, yes, I think innovation is alive and well, and I still do think that those opportunities exist. Facts. But he is moving to Texas, so I don't know what that Facts. means. Facts. Um, okay. Calm. The meditation app is raising. $75 million at a $2 billion valuation. My God. Hey, when you build things people want, you can build great businesses. That is wild. Why? It's literally an app that may, helps you meditate. Do you know that you can meditate without an app? You can just sit and not like listen to things. Yeah, but it's hard to sit do with that. your thoughts. I know, but that's the whole point of meditation. No, I fall asleep when I do oh, that. My, I, need, I need something talking to me. No, God. It's all right. But it, anyway. It's good. I like this business. Uh, I think it's a fantastic it, business. It's a fantastic business, especially at the time of COVID. So many people are freaked out, stressed out, yeah. anxietyed out, zoomed out. They need calm. I like this. Let's roll. Cool. All right. Are you ready for Ask Lunch Money Time? Yes. All right. First one. Chris Fetner, I'm going to record my first interview for my new podcast this weekend. Any tips to being a great interview host? You both are great examples. Well, I, mean, I mean, you know. What's your advice? Um, a great interview host. So here's my biggest piece of advice is um, don't go into it blind. This is literally the opposite strategy of what he does, but he's very, very different from me. For me... Uh, I read and listen to everything that the guest has done in the past. And I try to, I, I know what their talk track is. I know exactly. Most people ask the same questions. Find, if you know everything they've ever said and done, you can pick out things that sound interesting that nobody else followed up on. And you know what not to ask and try to veer the conversation in a different way. Because like, for example, if I want to listen to James Clear on habits, he's done so many interviews at this point and every single host kind of asks him the same stuff. 
I want to ask him something different. So that that's the, not that I'm interviewing James here, I think you are, but regardless, just find the things that, find the threads that are interesting to people that maybe, and make them think. If you can make your guests think and pause and be like, oh my God, I've never been asked that before, you're doing a great job. I only have one piece of advice. Ask a question, then shut up. Hey, that's my tweet. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole secret. Just yeah, let the guest talk. Listen. That's why That's why people are tuning in. They want to hear the guest. So ask your question and shut up. Let them talk. Don't oh, interrupt them. Although you have done some really great podcasts where you and the guest kind of go back and forth. Um, uh, there's exceptions to every rule, yeah. but mainly I think that's the best piece of advice I got. JMW, if the aliens land, will they be bullish on Bitcoin? How do you know they didn't create Bitcoin? Damn. <laughs> you mean Satoshi? Is an alien Satoshi? I just shortened. I don't. I don't know. I can tell you what they're not going to be interested in. Oh, look at this shiny rock! Honestly, why wouldn't they be interested in the rock? Because they can't bring it back. How can they bring Bitcoin back to their country, to their planet? Because <laughs> it's easy. You just put on a little USB drive, a little wallet, and you, and you just put it in your pocket, and you jump back on the alien craft, and we're out. What are they gonna so, do with the gold? The gold, take this heavy ass gold. Let's put the heavy ass gold in the in their spaceship. You guys want to hear something crazy? Yeah. I'm technically an alien because I was a naturalized citizen in this country, and I have an alien number. What kind of BS is that? Anyway, all right, we're done here. I think I have an alien number. Blockfi.com/slash/pump. <laughs> See ya. Bang bang. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Lunch Money as much as we did. And don't forget. Lunch Money is now sponsored by BlockFi, so go check them out. There's a link in the description that you can click on. I'm an investor, a user, and a huge fan. What? You're a bigger fan of BlockFi than you are of me? BlockFi is my second favorite thing in the world behind Polina. <laughs> They've got three products. <laughs> they can give you a U.S. dollar loan. You can earn up to 8.6% interest on an interest-bearing account, or you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their crypto exchange. I personally use the interest-bearing account. There's not very many places where you'll find up to 8.6% interest on a deposit in an interest-bearing account. Go do your own research. There's risk associated, but 8.6% is pretty compelling. So click on the link in the description. Say thanks to the folks at BlockFi. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Annoy Polina in the comments. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And be kind to your friends.